Hello again. We're going to be working with parallel and perpendicular lines to an equation. And we are going to be using point-slope form again, which is important, although some people dread it. And I always like teaching this uh, in any sort of algebra. No matter uh, what you teach in algebra, you, you're going to end up teaching something like this anyways, uh, which in itself is pretty interesting. And when you teach the younger kids, they kind of moan and groan, but they go along with it. And then when you get them when they're juniors or seniors again, uh, sometimes the reactions are quite funny. I remember a student of mine actually when I said, okay, we're going to be graphing parallel and perpendicular lines, and then a sigh came out of the student and just dropped his pencil in, in, in a bout of frustration. And uh, this is the first year I ever had the student, and I said, well, it seems that you're upset about graphing parallel and perpendicular lines. And I remember the person said, oh, I hate that stuff. I just, I just kind of... Uh, uh, pretended to go through it, not really knowing what I was doing. It, it was so frustrating. I said, well, you know, let me, let me go ahead and give this a try. Maybe you won't find it so frustrating. And he said, yeah, maybe. I mean, most of the stuff you teach is okay anyway, so we'll see what you do. Now, in order to graph parallel and perpendicular lines, I think it's important to understand what a parallel and a perpendicular line are before we go ahead and we, you know, like try to figure it out. And, well, let, let's at least figure out what we're actually doing here. So, if you're graphing a line, uh, and here's the line, 3x minus 1, for instance. My y-intercept is at negative 1, and then from my y-intercept I plot my slope. And my slope is 3 over 1, so it's up 3 over 1. And then I plot the point. Um, that's great. That you know, I I can I can guarantee that you can probably do that if you've been following along. Uh, the problem is that they want you in this particular word problem to come up with an equation where there'll be another line that passes through this point and will be parallel. And by parallel, I mean that it will never touch it. Pardon for a second. Okay. Yeah, I'm just drawing the rest of this graph out because it looks a little conflicting right now. Anyways, back to what I was going to say. So it goes through the point negative 3 and negative 5. So I want to find a line that's parallel and perpendicular to this line but it has to hit this point. That means what I end up having, what I, what I have to end up doing is find an equation that looks like this, something that's parallel, that will never touch it, that they'll just lock, you know, uh, go in lines forever, but they'll never touch. And then I need to find a line that looks like this, that's perpendicular, that crosses it at exactly a 90 degree angle. Uh, makes a, like a plus sign, actually, or makes a, a perfect right angle, like if you're building a room, you know, the, the wall and the floor meet at a 90 degree angle, at least one would hope. If it doesn't, it's a shaky foundation. So that's actually what I'm doing here. I'm trying to find this line and this line with only this piece of information. And you don't actually even have to graph it. All, graphing only just makes it a little bit easier to understand. But you don't actually have to graph in order to figure out the answer. So that's what I want to do. I want to find a line that's parallel and a line that's perpendicular to this equation and passes through these points. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, in order to do that, I have to use point-slope form. And we're going to start with parallel. Now, uh, when it comes to parallel slopes, the slopes are exactly the same. Uh, the lines aren't exactly the same, but the slopes are the same. They're going to go up at the same pace, or they're going to go down at the same pace, but they're going to be exactly the same. So, for my parallel slope, for uh, something that's parallel to this equation right here, my slope is 3. It's just exactly the same. Now, you're going to ask, well, what's my x1 and what's my y1? I'm glad you asked. Here it is. Here's the point they gave you. So it's y minus negative 5 equals 3 times the quantity x minus negative 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the two negatives to a positive on this step right now. Because I don't want to write it again. 
3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract 5 to get y by itself. There you go. You came up with a line that's parallel to this one, that will never touch it, that will never cross, and it's going to pass through this point. If you don't believe me, plug in this value right here into this equation, and I promise you, it's going to work. Now we're going to find one that's perpendicular. Uh, when it comes to perpendicular slopes, there are slopes that cross at exactly like a plus or a right angle. So that means that the slope is the opposite. Like if you got one slope going like this, the other slope's going to go like this. They're opposite. Now, if one's negative, the other's going to be positive, and they're going to be reciprocals of each other. So if this one's going up three, this one's going to go down a third. That's basically perpendicular slope. But it's better if I just write it out. So y minus negative five equals my slope is the reciprocal, the opposite reciprocal of this. So first of all, this was a positive, so a perpendicular slope is going to be a negative, and this was 3 over 1, so my reciprocal is going to be 1 third. Two negatives in a row make a positive. You can go ahead and do it on that step. Negative a third times x is negative one-third x. And negative a third times three. What's a third of three? It's one. What's a negative times a positive? It's negative. Subtract five on both sides. Negative 1 plus negative 5, negative 6. You just figured out your perpendicular line. So this one is parallel, and by parallel I'm going to write this symbol, because they never touch, and this one is perpendicular. Cross like at a plus or a T, whatever you want to call it. So that's an introduction again into uh, using the point-slope form, but this is for perpendicular and parallel lines. I hope you found that helpful. With that said, have a good day.